Step in, step out. There's an episode from MASH, a 1970s television series, where there's actually a physical joke about this, stepping in, stepping out of a door. But this is different. This is about vivid detail and joyful memories and mental acuity. Step in, step out. It sounds physical, right? Uh, I have script four pages. Hopefully I'll be able to keep it short. Now, step in, step out. It sounds physical. Step in to a door, step out of a door. Um, but this is actually about a mental exercise. And the, the idea or the purpose is to help you relax and be calm, either just before, just after, and when you get good at it, during a stressful situation. Folks use it before giving a speech, before going to a job interview, after a nasty argument. There are all kinds of times to use it. Basically, any time that you find you're getting anxious, you're getting stressed out by a thing, you can use step in, step out to bring yourself calmness. And the process is very simple. A little less than easy, okay, but it is very simple. As you might guess, there are two steps. Step in, so you step into a positive memory. And then when you step out, you step out into the current situation. So you are about to go into a job interview, you're about to do a public speaking engagement, or you are upset, you've just had a nasty argument, and you're stepping back into that feeling upset. And what you do is you repeat the step in, step out, as often as you need to until you feel calm. And the first few times you do it, you might step in and step out four, five, six, seven times. However, however often you need to. And then as you get better, you will get to a point where when you are in the midst of a stressful situation, you can just call up a positive memory that you have used repeatedly and take the feelings of calmness, take the feelings of joy and bring them to yourself in the midst of a stressful situation so that you can deal with it calmly. Now, uh, this sounds pretty simple and I thought it sounded actually too simple to work when I first heard about it. Uh, and even worse is now that I know how to do it, it's very easy. So it turned out to be both simple and easy. But, you know, I'll admit, doing the practice to get good at it is exactly that. You have to do the, the practice. And then for me, the difficult part is remembering to do it. Remembering to let go of the stressful situation bring up a positive memory and deal with the stressful situation calmly as opposed to dealing with it as a guy who's six feet tall and 250 pounds. Yeah, okay. So let's, uh, let's back up to the point of walking through this really simple process very thoroughly. First thing, you have to choose a positive memory. And more than, uh, say, like a birthday party or an anniversary where you're really, you know, hyped up kind of thing, that's certainly positive, but it's the wrong kind of memory. So what you're after is mostly a memory where you felt very calm, you felt very self-assured that you could handle what it was that was in front of you. And start with just one and try to use that one to bring forth just the calmness and the self-confidence. And then as you get good at recalling that one, you can start looking at, well, what are the different kinds of situations that are occurring for me? And are there different memories that I could use based on different situations?
Okay, so start with just one and get accustomed to being able to very quickly bring that memory to mind. Feel what you felt during that experience. And then when you step out into the current situation, bring that self-confidence and calmness with you. Now, here's an important point. You At the very start, I said that part of this is vivid detail. And I've talked before about how when you want to modify your self-image, you want to imagine the change in vivid detail. When you set a goal, something you want to achieve, you want to visualize that goal with vivid detail. Well, in this case, you are looking for vivid detail in the memory. And the first time you bring up the memory, you probably have some pretty good detail because it will be a strong, positive memory. So what you want to do is start building on that. Take some confidence from the fact that you already have some good detail. And then the more often you recall it, fill in more detail. Now here's the thing. A lot of people are going to recognize as you start filling in detail, the detail might be erroneous. Fortunately, that doesn't matter. What matters is that the detail you fill in helps you recall the calm, self-confident feelings that you had during the experience. So even if your very vivid memory ends up being a little inaccurate in the details, that's okay. That is perfectly fine. I guess it would also be important to note that there's no need for the memory you use to be similar to the stressful situation you are in. So let's say, actually I'm going to read what I have here in the script. The examples I use is you might remember scoring a goal, whether that's in tennis or football or soccer, whatever, and how that felt you know, that you felt very good, very confident, and you use that memory before you go do a speech. On the other hand, you might remember a really calm summer afternoon picnic kind of environment after you have had a fight with your teenager. Now, when you first start, you might just use that sport victory as your go-to memory. So every time you're feeling a stressful situation, you step into that memory of scoring the goal, remember how you felt, and then you come back into the stressful situation. And then as you get good at that one, then you start picking other memories that you can recall and use them for different uh, situations or circumstances. It is really about the memory, the emotion, that the... I phrased that backward, didn't I? It's about the emotion that the memory recalls. So initially, you want to pick a memory, like I said, that makes you feel calm and self-confident. Because pretty much any stressful situation is going to benefit from being exposed to you when you are most calm and self-confident. As you start to pick other memories for other situations, you might pick one memory that you use before you have to do any public speaking, and then a different memory that you use any time there's a stressful situation at home. And then if you are debating something, you're at a some sort of club meeting or committee meeting and you're debating something you might use a different memory to help yourself stay calm during a very passionate debate okay so the thing that you're after is the emotion that the memory stimulates because when you recall the memory you're going to step into that emotion calmness happiness self-confidence and when you open your eyes or you come back into the current situation, 
You want to bring those emotions with you. And what happens to make it easier is eventually you begin associating the memory with the stressful situation. Sort of the same as a fire alarm. Stressful situation, the fire alarm goes off, and you are immediately reassured. You are immediately calmed. Now, it has nothing to do with the reality of a fire alarm. That might actually be a stressful thing. But the alarm goes off in your mind that, whoa, I'm getting really upset here. That triggers you to call up the memory, which helps you be calm and self-confident. When you pick your first memory, I suggest putting it onto an index card or writing it on the back of a business card so you can pull it out and read it very quickly and easily and that will help trigger the memory. Something I have done, I actually have a laminated poster of my five greatest memories hanging in my kitchen. Why in my kitchen, of course? Well, because I work from home. And sometimes when I'm researching these episodes, I get really passionate about what I'm researching. And when I get passionate like that, when I get upset like that, and I need to calm down, I can just walk two, three steps into the kitchen, look at one of the memories in the poster that's hanging there, and go, ah, oh, yes, okay, I remember what that's like. And that helps me chill out and go back to keep working. Now the last thing I have here is about why it's called step in and step out. And it is quite literally that you are stepping into the memory. And as quickly as you can, and with practice obviously you get faster, you want to feel the emotions that go with what happened. And then you step out into the current situation. So if you bring forward from the memory your calmness, your self-confidence, you bring that forward and say, okay, I'm going to go give a speech, but you know what? I feel very calm. I feel very confident. I'm going to go do this speech. It doesn't mean that the anxiety just goes away. It just means that you are better able to handle it. And as I've said, what, three times, four times in this video already? The better you get at it, the more you practice this process of step into a memory, latch onto the emotions that are there with the memory, and then step out into the current situation and bring those emotions with you, the faster and easier it gets, which also translates to you could be on a stage in the middle of a speech and suddenly you'll lose your place. And maybe right now, today, that would cause you to panic. But as you practice this process of step in, step out, you feel that panic start to happen. You very quickly recall your particular memory and go, whoa, wait a second. Calm, self-confident. Just take a moment, find my place, then move forward. You could do the same kind of thing that I do in these videos. When I have something in the script and I realize I'm getting off, I'm going on a tangent, I say, okay, I'm going to read what's right in the script. Or I just look at the script and read it. And then come back to looking into the camera. And you can do the exact same thing in front of a live audience. You can look at your notes. You can just say to the audience, oh, I lost my train of thought. Let me think for a second. Ha, huh, I have it back now. Okay, let's keep going. And an important thing about doing that is that it makes you much more relatable to the audience. So they are already looking at you as the expert because you're the person in front giving them new information. Well, if they see you, you know, make a gaffe, make a mistake, forget what it is you were going to say, and then get back on track, that makes you much more relatable. So it's actually 
It may feel bad when you do it, but it is actually a good thing because it makes you relatable. And the last thing I have is let me close by telling you the only way to learn this technique is by doing it. You have to practice. Give it a try. You know, think about something, watch a movie that makes you cry or watch a documentary that makes you angry. And then practice stepping into a memory and then stepping out and continuing to watch the documentary and see can you do it without being upset.